Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another Moralist tutorial video. My name is Vasilia, I'm your web Pro instructor, and today we are going to talk about a really important topic how to manage large petitions to our Web3 APIs. On past tutorials, we show you how you can use some of our endpoints, like this one, Get Wallet NFTs. So basically, if we put here a wallet address and a chain, we get information of the NFTs this specific wallet has. And at the end, the items shown here are based on a limit. We set it up at 10. But what happens when the request you are asking for to the API is bigger? Maybe you are building a DAP or an NFT marketplace, or maybe a place on which you have to handle a lot of transactions or things like that. How can you manage those petitions? Well, most of our endpoints has a parameter called cursor, which is designed specifically for that. So for example, if your request has a thousand of elements, you can split in parts that request so you can get the information step by step. So for the same endpoint we used on the web page example, get NFTs by wallet, we are going to provide here the same wallet address. The chain is going to be Ethereum. We are going to set up again a limit of 10. This is the elements which are going to be shown on the screen or on the petition. And for now, we are going to leave this cursor as empty. So let's click here and try it. And we are going to have this big response with all the NFT information. But here on the top, we have this cursor. As you can see, it's a really long string. So let's copy this out. And now let's paste it over here. Also notice that on our first response, we have page one. If we provide the cursor and make a petition again, let's click again and try it, we are going to get page number two. And of course, this big string is going to change. So using this cursor parameter, we are going to be able to split our big response on small pieces we can just handle on our front end, maybe on our NFT marketplace or any other dApp we are working with. So on today's demo, we are going to have something like this. Here I'm using the same endpoint, but with a most updated interface, let's paste the address, the chain by default is Ethereum, and let's click on get NFTs. And here I have the information of those NFTs. And yes, some of these NFTs are not showing the image. And the reason is because we actually don't have a standard on the industry on how to manage NFT metadata. Maybe 2023 is the year for us to have a specialized standard for that. But for the ones who actually has an image to show on the metadata, well, we have it over here. So again, on this petition, our limit is set up to 10. But now, using that cursor parameter, we can just click on next page. This is going to be, get updated and we can get the next 10. And we can start doing it over and over again until getting all the NFTs this wallet has. This is really useful because if you're creating a DAP, the amount of elements you are going to be able to show on the screen is going to be limited. So using this cursor parameter, you can make multiple petitions to the API and get all the information you want. So let's give a quick look about how you can accomplish this using code. For today's tutorial, I'm using React.js on the front end and Django on the back end as our Python development framework. So on the Django project, I have a function here called services.py, which is connecting to that endpoint, get wallet NFTs. And by the way, if you don't know how to use this endpoint, don't forget we already have a tutorial on this and more endpoints you can always check out. Today, we are going to focus our attention on this cursor parameter over here. So basically now I have a function called get user NFTs, which is going to take the address, the chain and the cursor as parameters. Here is important we set up the cursor parameter as an empty string by default, because remember the first petition we are going to ask to the API endpoint is going to be empty. Then we can use this function on the views and all the information we are going to get from the front end is going to pass through this request parameter over here. And we have to check if the cursor is not empty. Well, we are going to set up that cursor with the information from the front end. Otherwise, let's keep that cursor empty. OK, and actually, that's it. This was really easy to implement. So on the front end, when we connect to the endpoint get NFTs, we are going to use this set NFT data to update all the data of the response, but also we are going to set the params 
for that cursor because again on the front end also the cursor starts as an empty string so each time we execute these refresh nfts we are going to update that cursor parameter and of course this refresh nfts is connected to this get nfts button and just to make it look nicer if we don't have a response yet on the nft data the text is going to be get nfts and once we have the first petition the text is going to change to next page so we are going to end up having the same as i showed you at the beginning on which we can get multiple api requests getting all the nfts for this wallet and you can use this cursor parameter with a lot of our endpoints just remember something important each time we click on the button which triggers this refresh and this function we are creating a new api request so it's up to you how you want to manage this in order to don't ask a lot of petitions at once and that was it for this tutorial now you understand how you can take this cursor parameter and use it in your advantage to manage petitions no matter how large they are and we did it in almost no time how cool is that and that was it for today's tutorial don't forget all the code for this lesson is on the git code repo so check out the link on the description and as you are already here Click over here to subscribe to Morales channel, turn on the notifications, and also check out more videos. Thanks for watching till the end, and see you on the next occasion.